Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up and customize your Xbox Elite controller on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing you need to do is, of course, have your Xbox turned on and be logged in. You're also going to need to have your controller connected. This can be either wireless or via a wire. Either of these will work just fine. From this point, I'm going to be starting from my dashboard. I'm going to be clicking the Y button to open up our search button right here, and I'm going to be searching for accessories. Once we do this, we should see this Xbox accessories application right here. We're going to be coming to this. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. And here, once we open this up, we're going to be able to see all currently connected accessories to our Xbox. At the very beginning here, you can see I currently have my Elite controller, my Elite Series 2. What you need to do is come here and find whatever accessory Elite controller you currently have. Once you have it, we're going to be clicking the Configure button, and here we're going to be able to edit a couple things. The first thing here on the left we will have is our profiles, and currently you can see we currently have three profiles added to our controller. If you would like to create a new one, you can create a new one right here, and then you can choose and edit any of the profiles you have. Currently I have three loaded onto my controller, but you'll see all extra or non-added profiles on your controller listed below. As you can see, I have one right here. What I'm going to be doing is editing my main profile as an example. What you can do is come here, click the A button, and then you will have it selected. The first thing we can do is change the slot, and currently we have three on the Elite Series 2. I'm actually going to be leaving this on slot 1, which means once you have one light on the controller, this is what it will be active with. The next thing we can do is actually edit this profile, including some of the mappings and everything else. So what we need to do is come here, click the Edit button right here, and here we're going to be able to do a couple things. The first thing we can do is edit the mappings for this controller. So here what we can do is select any of the buttons here. So what you need to do is highlight them with the blue square right here. So what I'm going to be doing is using the LB as an example here on the back, the left back paddle. I'm going to be clicking the A button to open this up. And here we'll have a couple of options that we can map inside this button. We have primary, shift, and use as shift button. So I'm going to be focusing on the primary button first, and then I'll be talking about the shift and use as shift button a little bit later. So the first thing we can do is actually select what primary button we want this to be. We can click A here and we can determine exactly what we want this button to do. So you can select this to whatever you want. So if you want this back paddle to be an A button, for example, you can select that here. And now this back button will work as an A button. So here you can customize and choose exactly what you want. I'm just going to be leaving it as a left bumper for now. But you can really pick and choose exactly how you want here. The next thing we have is the shift button and the use as shift button. So if you enable a button to be as a shift button, it's basically going to activate shift mode on your controller. When held in, all other buttons will then be activated as a shift button button rather than a normal button. So what that means is if I have my lower left paddle shift button as X and I have my upper left paddle as the shift button, when I hold in my upper left paddle, my bottom left paddle will be activated as an X button rather than a left bumper whenever I hold in my shift button. So this basically allows us to remap every button on the controller with a shift button. So basically we have double the amount of buttons on our controller, which is a really cool feature. It's not something I'm that interested in. I think it already has enough flexibility. However, this is something you can feel free to experiment with if it's something you're interested in. From this point, if you would like to restore to default, you can feel free to at the bottom here, or you can go through and customize everything you want. The next thing we can do is come up here to the left stick here in the center, and here we can choose some adjustment curves, we can choose a sensitivity curve, and we can play around with how our left stick is going to be activated. So we can choose a primary or a shift button here as well as mentioned before. We can then choose a sensitivity curve, default, delayed, aggressive, instant, or smooth, and here you can see approximately what it's going to do. You can then adjust the curve a little bit more to find the exact fine tuning that you want. So here it's a little bit tricky. I really believe you need to play around with these, put it on a different sensitivity curve and then go into whatever game you play most and really see and feel how it actually determines with your controller. So for the most part, I actually like leaving this on a default curve, but this is something you can play around with. And then finally, you can change the calculation from radial, axis independent or true diagonals. Again, I'd recommend coming in here, playing around with what you want and seeing exactly what works best for you in the games that you're playing. So next to this, then we then have our right stick. And again, we have all the same settings as was on our left stick before. So I'd recommend really changing these up, going to your game, playing around with it and seeing what works best for you. The next thing we have is our triggers and the dead zones. So here we can set up the dead zones for our trigger to determine when they're pressed and when they max out. And this is a really cool feature you can do for both the left and the right trigger. Or if you want, you can mirror the triggers, which will make them actually be combined together. So what you do on one trigger will be combined on the other. So you can really experiment here and find exactly what works best for you with your triggers. Again, a little bit of experimentation will be required here. Next to this, we then have the vibration and edit in four different locations. You can, do the, you can do the left trigger, the left main, the right trigger, and the right main. And here you can feel free to actually test these. Enabling and disabling this will actually vibrate the controller itself. So you can really find what works best for you. So feel free to play around with this and see what 
what you like with your controller. So for me, I like leaving the mains full and I like leaving the triggers around 20%. But again, it's really about experimenting and seeing what you like best with this. And then the last thing here we have is the brightness. And here we can determine how bright our button is on our actual controller. So you can turn this all the way up to 100%. Or if you turn this off, it'll be fully off on your controller. And you can really customize and see what you like here best with this. Once you're happy with all of your mappings, you can simply click the B button to go back out of here. And then all of your settings will automatically be saved on slot one. Next to this, we then have the rename option. So you can rename your profile. You can have the delete option if you'd like to delete any profiles. Or you have the duplicate and copy option where it'll basically make a duplicate of the current profile that we have in case you want to change one or two things. And it will basically save you some time depending on what you want to do. Anyway guys, it's as easy as that to set up, map and edit an Xbox Elite controller on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. I want to give a huge shout out to the members who help supporting the channel, both Franks and Sean Daly. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. If you'd be interested in having your name shout out in future videos and some other perks, click the join button underneath any video on the channel and become a member. So I'd really appreciate it. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to support me, be sure to drop a super thanks in this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.